Greetings! Back when I took a bit of a vacation last month, I also went and did a tour of used books stores. My dad knows all the good places and he was happy to take me along and show me his favorite stores. Here is my used books haul. The first book is The Watercolor Painter's Solution Book by Angela Gare. The book presents a problem on one page and a solution on the next. The problem is put forth by a student and their work, while the solution is based on work from a master painter. I have a similar book in French, and it is why I chose to get this one too. Some of the paintings for the solution are by one of my favorite painters, Stan Perrot. The second book is in French, titled Les Secrets de l'Aquarelle, by David Lewis. It is the French translation of a book titled Watercolor Painting Techniques. This book is not hard to find here. I think I saw a copy of it in every bookstore I visited. It is a good book covering the basics and the techniques, with beautiful examples and demos. The third book is a bit different, as it's a book about calligraphy. It's also in French, with the title L'ABC du calligraphe by David Harris. Again, it is a translated version, the original title being The Art of Calligraphy. I chose this one out of the few calligraphy books I saw because it was the only one with such detailed steps on how to write the letters. The next book is one my dad had found and saved for me. It's titled Figures, Faces by Hugh Laidman. I had to be careful about what to share here since it's an anatomy book so there are nude drawings in the book. What I love of this book is the artist's touch, which is more organic and fluid. I saw many anatomy books with a more angular approach while this one is really all about gracious lines and curves.
At one of the stores, I found these two beautiful books about Norman Rockwell. It is not hard nowadays to find books about the work of this influential artist. What I don't see as often is such large and high quality plates or reproductions. Most of the pages in these two books feature one full page beautiful painting. There is very little text. These books are all about the art. I happened to find a third, even bigger book about Rockwell's paintings when I came back from my vacation. A used books library has just opened in the neighborhood. It's funny how these things all work out. The seventh book is one showcasing the printed work of Albrecht Dürer. If the name sounds familiar, it might be from Faber-Castell's range of watercolor pencils named after him. Dürer, the artist, was prolific in the 15th and 16th centuries, and he was both a painter and a printmaker. His work is intricate and fascinating. I can only show some of the pieces here as many feature nude characters, but it's enough to give you an idea of the men's printmaking skills. The following book is about the Wyeth painters, N.C., Andrew, and James. It's an exhibition catalogue, but I'm mostly interested in it for the art of N.C. and Andrew. Their paintings are truly beautiful and inspiring. This next book is probably one of the most curious of the whole. The title would translate to something like The Fantastic Creatures of Edward Julius Detmold. I had never heard the name before, but the cover won me instantly. The book is full of beautiful reproductions of Detmold's work, featuring mostly animals and creatures. The tenth book is also a very peculiar one. It's an older book titled The Art of Landscape Painting by Leonard Richmond. It's just beautiful. It was printed in black ink with green accents and features decorative letters at the beginning of new chapters. Also, all the reproductions are color plates, which were printed apart and then glued into the book. It was a very different process to print a color book 80 years ago, and that makes this book all the more fascinating.
This book is titled John Pelou Paints Watercolors Advanced Techniques in Painting Landscapes and Seascapes. I had never read or heard Mr. Pelou's name before, but his paintings are gorgeous and I'm really interested in the techniques he's sharing with us in this book. Now, this book will feel like déjà vu, as its title is almost the same as the book I've just shown you. <laughs> this one is John Pike Paints Watercolors. This name I had heard before, so when I saw the book, I was very interested to bring it home. Again, beautiful and inspiring art. The next book is something very different. It's a book of cat photos. <laughs> Shock! Surprise! Why did I pick this up? Or rather, how could I not pick this up? It's a book full of absolutely beautiful cat photos in black and white, but they had me even before that. They had me at cat, of course. I also found this book, Labrador West The Landscape, by Larry Jenkins. I love the landscape and the scenery in it, and I thought it would make for a convenient reference book. This would be the 15th book, but it's not as much a book as a few pages stapled together. I was drawn to the remarkable skillmanship of the illustrations and thought there would be a lot to learn and observe from them. The way the illustrator, P. Latimer, inked his work is impressive. Also, cats. The following book is about printing with stencils and four colors. I can't seem to find any reference if this book is originally in French or a translated version of another book. It's basically about working with a limited palette, which is why I picked it up. The next thing I brought home is a magazine's special number on Japan, featuring a lot of photos. It's 30 years old, so I find it super interesting to have this sneak peek into everything before computers, cell phones and internet became the new reality.
I got a few books related to Japan, and this little one is also one of them. It's a catalog of art treasures from Japan. It's quite old, and all the images are rather small and in black and white, but I still thought it was an interesting reference, and I was very curious about it. To keep with the theme, this book is also about Japanese art, but this time it's about contemporary Japanese paintings. Again, a topic I hadn't researched before, but that I was instantly curious about. This one has more text than others, but the variety of paintings featured in it is very interesting and inspiring. The last three books are a bit different. These two are about Japanese gardens. I love any book about plants as a reference for drawing plants, but these two have additional notions about composition and the grouping of elements in a garden, which I think might translate over well to when drawing an image from imagination. The very last book is also about plants and composition. This one is about ikebana, the Japanese art of flower arrangement. I feel like the basis of ikebana can translate to other disciplines, including drawing. I know, you'll say, that's a lot of books. And I agree. They are all fairly unique, and they all have a story. I love used books because they present you with options you would not have sought, at a very affordable price, usually. You can discover artists or read on topics you wouldn't have known, or wouldn't have wanted to shell out a lot of money on a book. And I know, there is this thing called internet that has pictures and text at the touch of a fingertip but I'm old school. Like many others, I still really like holding books and smelling paper, both old and new, to give my eyes a break from looking at something else than a screen. And with art books, some of them are out of print, so you could find something really special on the shelves of the used bookstores. 
I guess my message here is to go check out your local used books places and come back with stories about the pretty things you found there. Have a lovely day, bye bye.